How's it going, guys? Uh, welcome to another update. I'm gonna do an update on some of the bu the uh, blood pythons. Excuse me. So let's start off with my eldest blood python. Um, that's Blooda. He is a 2007 hatched animal. Uh, he's around about 11 years old. He's an old guy. And I think he's in shed right now. So let me just pull him out and we can take take a look at him. So he's definitely in shed. Of course, I've always kept this guy pretty thin. But he's a big dude. And he's in a V70 right now, a V70 tub. I'm currently building out an enclosure for him. Uh, but he's fine in there, he likes the tight quarters. Look at the blue in his eyes. Oh yeah, probably really uncomfortable, so I'm gonna set him back. But that's an update on the dude. Now this next one's gonna be a little bit tricky. She doesn't actually like to be handled much. This is my girl, Atma. That's spelled A T M A. Just keeping her from swinging distance right now, kind of keeping her at bay. They like to swing their heads around, so I'm gonna try not to get bit today, guys. So there she is. I'm gonna put her back now. She's head for T negative albino. This guy, who is a T negative albino. And uh, I don't really know what I'm going to call him yet. I just something just came to my mind right now. Uh, let's see if you guys like the name, but I'm gonna, I'm thinking about calling him uh, Sin Negro, or Sin Negro. I like the fact that the word Sin is in his name, but in Spanish that just means uh, without black or no black. And he's starting to redden up. When I first got this guy, he was kind of an orange and yellow and white. But let's see if that focuses. He's got that red blushing coming in the side of his head now, which looks freaking red. Focus up, buddy. And then, of course, the red is coming in. He's just coming into his uh, adult coloration. Yeah, pretty big jump from Orange, yellow, and white to this reddish, reddish coloration, and up to a, maybe a couple weeks ago, I actually wasn't able to do even this kind of handling with him. I still don't trust him completely. Uh, both of the younger guys are pretty jumpy, so um, I'm not holding them as would be most comfortable to them because. Uh, Cause I don't trust him quite yet, but we're working towards that trust. Um, Blood up was tame from the beginning, so I didn't really have to do much with him. So with these guys, I'm doing a lot of hook training, meaning ooh, crap, meaning I uh, pop this off. Sorry about that. 
meaning I am doing some uh, hook training with them, which means I'm just kind of, um, excuse me while I fix this, which means I will touch them with the hook um, and then we'll pick them up and I use the hook to kind of block their face so they can't swing around and nail me. But that's kind of how I'm training those guys. I didn't broke my dang hook. Let me get, help me get the dirty one. Um, so that's the update on the blood pythons. If you're wondering about the big red female, I, um, I sold it to my boss. Uh, so she's at a good home right now. Um, that was Harley, of course. She had the, the H on the, her tail. Um, she's a 2012 that I got from Zach Green, uh, Zach Green's Reptiles. Uh, check him out. He's got a YouTube, um, and he is um, breeding some crazy stuff. Just really hatched out a um, Borneo clutch. Uh, really cool um, uh, ocelot um, that I think he got from Matt Minatola. Uh, but, yeah, um, go check him out. He's where I got Harley from. And Harley's doing well at her new home. And so I'm gonna focus on the head T negative and T negative um, breeding project once they get all grown up. Um, and of course, Bledda, he's just a, a, a pet that I'm gonna keep forever. Um, and working on a, an enclosure for him that, um, oh, here, let me pick this up and actually show you what I'm gonna be working on. So not that, but this table here, I'm hoping to build a custom enclosure to fit directly on top of here. Nothing permanently affixed to that, of course, but um, something that's pretty high and that I can use for something else when um, Bloodda does pass away. Uh, I'm hoping he lives, you know, into his late 20s and. Uh, let's, I'm gonna try to make him a record breaker, right? <laughs> That's what we all hope for. Um, I'm thinking of turning this tabletop here into his stand, so he would have this entire surface area. Um, and I know he's just gonna be using a small portion of it to hang out when it's, where it's nice and warm and covered, but hoping to build up a nice um, layer of um, substrate and leaf litter so that he feels nice and comfortable, but being able to provide the proper humidities and things like that for him, and a huge tub that he can go in and lay out in. And this is kind of gonna be his retirement um, retirement home. So that's a project I'm working on, and I'm currently working on this setup. Not ideal for a Lichianus gecko, a giant gecko, but I mean, my Lichianus is about, you know, yay big from nose to tail tip. So he's gonna be just fine in here, even without elevation, because I'm gonna fix uh, cork tubes and things like that to the very top portion of this. And once I get a top on this, I'm gonna be using glass to kind of help with the humidity a bit. So I don't want it to escape too much. Um, but yeah, that's where the toke is going. Sorry, toke, um, the Lichianus. I know this started off as a blood python uh, update, but uh, he's in this enclosure temporarily. He's got his little food dish there and water. Um, so he's in this. I made a video of him building an enclosure for him that is about this size, but that was just a temporary setup. Um, he'll be moving on to something like this. And as long as they're in cork and can hide, Elevation of the enclosure isn't that big of a deal. Now elevation, I think, compared to us, is a huge deal. So to make him feel more comfortable, I'm gonna use this lumber here to build out a stand that'll actually allow this enclosure to sit pretty high up. Um, and I'm gonna try to make it um, furniture grade, so I will be covering that with some, some cladding that'll allow it to be, um, you know, to look aesthetically pleasing and still be in um, a home. So I hope to build a tall stand for this, which will allow him to feel more comfortable and he'll live out here. Cause he actually, um, 
Every now and then, I'll hear him clamoring around when he was back in his old enclosure, and he'd be on the ground and just cruising around. So um, I think having a good surface area is good. Um, I don't want it too cluttered, but I'm, I am going to have pieces of bark uh, selectively placed along the upper portions of here. So when the, he's on a tall stand, he'll actually feel pretty comfortable. Um, but yeah, this is just a temporary doodad right now. I, I tore down the um, smaller enclosure and I'm gonna be selling that. But um, that's it for the update on the snakes, um, or the blood pythons rather. And uh, just a little tidbit on what I'm working on in terms of um, a permanent enclosure for Blooda and what I'm gonna be doing with the Lichianus. So um, tune in, I will try to kit some more videos out. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share, and all that good stuff. And I appreciate your viewership. And uh, have a good one. Thanks. Bye-bye.